In multicellular organisms, cells move around in a three-dimensional environment. Most cell migration studies, however, are performed in two-dimensional culture dishes. Although 2D migration might not be strictly representative of 3D migration, it is considerably easier to analyse, and as such, 2D analysis has provided researchers with valuable knowledge about the pathways and proteins involved in cell migration. A new report in the Journal of Cell Biology by Andrew Doyle and colleagues suggests, perhaps counterintuitively, that cells migrating in one dimension, that is, along a thin line, might actually better represent 3D migration than cells in 2D. And the good news is that thanks to a technique devised by the team, 1D migration should be almost as easy to study as 2D migration. Andrew Doyle, the lead author on the study, who is based at the National Institute of Health in Bethesda, Maryland, explained to me that the group made their discovery whilst they were investigating a new method for applying micropatterns of proteins onto cover slips. Micropatterning is used for studying things such as cell adhesion, and previous micropatterning techniques involved the printing of proteins onto gold-plated cover slips. However, this approach has its limitations. One of the main issues with uh, microcontact printing was the fact that um, they usually use a gold-coated um, surface. Um, and that quenches fluorescence because it's an electron-dense metal. That was kind of one of the, one of the things that we really wanted to do because, you know, uh, patterning is great, but if, if it really limits the types of experiments you would like to do, you know, then, then you have to kind of find your way around it. Doyle et al.'s new fluorescence-friendly approach is to first coat cover slips with a substance that resists protein and cell binding, called polyvinyl alcohol, or PVA. The next step is to remove regions of the PVA using a high-powered laser. Proteins that are then added to the cover slip will only stick to those PVA-lacking regions. Among the micropatterns that the team drew were simple straight lines. When extracellular matrix proteins and then subsequently cells were added to such cover slips, the cells started to migrate along the matrix containing lines. And importantly, Doyle et al. noticed that the cells' movement looked just like that of cells on 3D matrices. Cells migrating in 2D shown here on the left, have a spreading, multi-axial morphology. But on the 1D lines, as in 3D matrices, the cells are uniaxial. Cells also move more rapidly in 1D and 3D, even when their root is densely packed with binding proteins or ligands. On 2D surfaces, high ligand density actually slows cells down as they have trouble detaching. The faster speed is probably explained by the fact that less of the cell is in contact with the surface, so more of its cytoskeletal machinery is available for driving the cell forward. Here you can see clearly how the cells slow down and spread out as they reach the end of their lines. By keeping a relatively low amount of uh, spread area, the cells have the ability to continue moving because they don't have to wait for the rear of the cell to retract. Besides the similarities in morphology and movement, there was also a number of intracellular similarities between 1D and 3D migrating cells that were not shared by the 2D migrating cells. This begs the question, is there a future for 2D analysis? For that, Doyle has a diplomatic answer. The fact that so many things are very similar between 3D and 1D, you know, does suggest that there's this other aspect that um, hasn't been looked at a ton um, in the past, um, but I think now people are, um, especially in the cell migration field, are, have to take a closer look at um, whether or not um, what's happening in the dish is this really what happens um, in vivo. To find out more about micropatterning and migration, read Doyle et al.'s full report in the February 23rd issue of the Journal of Cell Biology. 
or access the article online at jcb.org.